Hey everyone, welcome back to The Casual Puzzler. My name is Emily. Welcome to the last video of the year, which is a roundup of my 2021 puzzling. And I had so much fun starting this channel this year. I've had so much fun meeting you. Well, not in person, but having more friends in my life that enjoy puzzles and just reading your comments. I try to respond to as many as I can. And I love reading your emails and receiving your letters. And it's just been so much fun and so much joy. And I thank you so much for being a member of this community and I've been having so much fun in my little Facebook group and it's just been a blast and I thought it'd be fun to do a little roundup of the year. How many puzzles did I do? Um, what? How many brands did I do? And then I'm ranking my top 10 plus an honorable mention. So that's what we are doing here today. Um, before I start, I do want to mention that I do have a new camera that I'm using. Um, Dave got me a GoPro for Christmas and we're just trying it out for this video. Very much a learning curve. Never used something like this before. Not sure how the audio is on it. So it's going to be an adjustment, but I am excited. The next few videos are still pre-filmed with my old setup, um, but this one I can now do like overheads without worrying about my crazy expensive DSLR. So I'm excited about that. I hope you are too. We can all thank Dave for improving the quality of this channel, but we are just going into the puzzles and all of the nitty gritty. So let's just get into it. Before we get into my top 10, I just wanted to mention some numbers in case you are curious. I have been keeping track of every single puzzle that I've done this year. So I've been keeping track on an Excel sheet, which seems a kind of extra, but was very really fun to do, was to see all the puzzles that I did, how many I did, how many pieces did I do. And so for this year, I did 71 puzzles, which I'm proud of. My goal is 52 to do one per week, especially with my workload for school and work. So I'm happy with that number. Now I included my advent calendars, but not individually. So if it was the New York Puzzle Company advent calendar, which is 24 puzzles, that counted as one puzzle. So just to let you know on that. Um, but for piece count, I did 42,504, which I'm also very impressed with. I know it's not the largest piece count, but again, I'm happy with it. I feel like I did a ton of puzzles and was able to do way more than I was expecting. And so I'm happy with that number. In total, I tried 41 different puzzle brands, which I didn't think it was that many. But then when I was looking, I was like, wow, I really did. I didn't really repeat a lot of puzzle brands often. I think the most common one was the Buffalo Games, but that's because I did five puzzles for that video. So that was the most popular one that I did. And I think the second one was New York Puzzle Company, actually, because one stuck in at the very end of the year. Um, and then we had three puzzles that I did not finish. One was due to time constraints when I was in Maine for a vacation and we just like ran out of time. Um, and then one was the Disney and one was the Disneyland map because I couldn't deal with the eyesight issues. Um, and then the other one was American flat or something like that, that brand, just because that quality was a hot mess. So out of the 72, these are the top 10 plus an honorable mention. And these are all for different reasons. Some it's the quality, sometimes it's, it's the image, sometimes it just made me happy when I was doing it. So it's all very relative to me. Um, but I thought you'd enjoy seeing what puzzles I really love this year. And I will try to put them all down below in the description. So I needed to put this one in my top video of the year because it just brought me so much joy when I was doing it. Even though the quality isn't the best, it just made me so incredibly happy, which is why it's in the 11th spot, but I still need to just like bring it up, which is the Beetlejuice puzzle from Blockbuster. It is 500 pieces. I loved this puzzle. It was, I almost included it in the top 10, but I thought quality wise, it probably doesn't deserve to be in there. The video that I had done for this one, which by the way, I think every single one of these besides one, which isn't out yet, has a video on them. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but for this one here, I loved filming this video and I did it from the bottom up. I loved editing it. I loved the music. It was just really fun. Give me all the warm and fuzzies because I had this movie when I was a kid. I loved watching it. So it was just so much fun. It was a blast to do quality wise, not the best, not the worst, but I really enjoyed doing this. I also think this would be great for travel. So I 
would recommend them even though they're not the best quality. I mean, they're only like $7 and sometimes you get them for even less. Some people have seen them at their dollar stores. So for the price point, 100% recommend and I loved it so much. In number 10 also gave me more warm and fuzzies, nostalgic feels, but also reintroduced me to the brand. So I want to bring it up is the Buffalo Games, the music shop, but in general, the Charles Wasaki line from Buffalo Game Puzzles. I rediscovered this brand this year thanks to your recommendations. Such great quality for the price point. They're only like 10 to $15 depending on the size. And I love this one. I had this style of puzzle, this collection of puzzles when I was younger. I remember we had gone to a yard sale and we had gotten like 10 for like $3 or something crazy. And I loved them. I, lo I did every single one. And so having this collection back in my life was just like really fun. And it was just, even though it was a thousand pieces, it didn't feel like a lot of pieces. And so I really enjoyed this one a lot. Really loved how vibrant and beautiful it was. And again, it was just made me happy. So I wanted to include it in this counting. So number nine is this one because of the image. So this is from a brand I've never done before. They're made in the USA. It's called Remarks, that's the brand. And the one is Tropical. I did this one during my 12 hour puzzle day and I really love this image. It was really fun and different and just fun to do just because there's all these different patterns and I remember doing like a really good sort so it's just really satisfying when I was putting the pieces. The piece quality reminds me a lot of Buffalo Game Puzzles so I just really enjoy this one. It was really vibrant and bright and just I remember it stayed, stayed together really well. Now I'm not sure if I would actually get more from this brand or if it was just the image that made me really excited about this one but I wanted to include it here because I remember having so much fun with this puzzle and I could see me redoing this one, which is very rare just because it was just a fun, again, a fun one to do. So I really enjoyed that one. And the eighth spot is this one. And I, I really enjoyed this one. One, because it was the first brand that had reached out to me to send me a free puzzle. So I was just really happy and giddy about getting in a puzzle for my channel. And I also loved that my husband joined in and we had a lot of fun doing puzzles together. And so this was the first time in a long time that we had done a puzzle together. And also the quality is lovely. I remember the only issue I had was the edge was really difficult because every piece pretty much fit together on the edge. I didn't notice it too much in the inside, but around the border it was tricky because every puzzle piece fit together. And I think in general, it was a little bit looser of a fit than not others, but I remember the piece quality was lovely. It was like, had that like linen-y type of feel, which some people don't like, I do. I feel like it adds to the quality of the puzzle, just makes it feel a little bit more high end. Um, but I remember the pieces being just a really good thickness and a really good snap when you put it in the pieces. So I really enjoyed this one. So this is the Tracer, the Wildlife Collection number two, Temperate Treetops. I could see myself buying more from them in the future, but the shipping cost was a bit expensive because it is a Swiss brand. So I do love this puzzle and I like that it's a collection of puzzles so maybe over the course of a couple of years I could see myself getting more and just finishing off the collection there's eight total and it ends up creating like this big massive mural which I think is really cool I could see myself redoing this one again whenever I got more just to see how they fit together um, and I can see this one just being one that I have for a really long time I so I wanted to mention it because I love what they're doing they also have some really great sustainability practices and I Again, I just really like this one and it just makes me happy and it's so bright and beautiful. So I have to mention it here, it definitely deserves to be in my top 10. In seventh place, I have this one, which surprised So this one in seventh place is really here. One, because of the quality, I did really enjoy doing it, but it was just a happy, bright image that fell into my life in a very tough time. It happened all in one week where like three different family members were in the hospital for different reasons. I was just in a really sad state and it was just really stressful. So I had started doing this puzzle one day and I just loved how bright and colorful and happy the puzzle was. So I ended up just doing it in the course of a week versus doing it all in one sitting. And I feel like it was just a great stress reliever and it reminded me how much Puzzles can really help with my mood. So this is the Sunnyside Flower Market from Crown Point Graphics. 
Again, very bright, colorful, has that soft touch feel, which I love from Art and Fable, but they're very expensive, where this one I ended up getting for like $8 at Hobby Lobby. So for the price point, it was lovely, but in general, it's just lovely in general. It did have a paper backing, which didn't really hinder it at all, which I really enjoyed. You know, I still had a great, great fit, but when I took it apart, I didn't have any issues. And it had very bright, pieces a very matte which I love because I'm doing puzzles usually underneath light um, but I loved it for the image I loved it for the quality for the price point so had to be in this video and I could see myself doing more from this brand especially if I found them at Hobby Lobby for a discount for in general 15 to 16 dollars I also heard that you can get them on Walmart as well for a pretty low price so Definitely would recommend this brand if you're interested or if you're interested in trying a puzzle with a soft touch or with that like velvety type of feel. This is a great one to do because you have that same texture but you're not spending a ton of money, which is great. In sixth place, we have this one from Soonness. This is the Marine Life. The only downfall I had for this brand is that it dyed my fingers blue temporarily. I washed it off, no problems. But I could see this being an issue if you had maybe a bright section and then like a light section. I'm not sure if it would rub off on other pieces. I didn't have that issue because most of the puzzle pieces were blue, but the other qualities of it is amazing. I know Soon was working with manufacturing to figure out that issue so i'm not sure if they fixed it i really like the puzzle quality and i loved how bright this puzzle was so i could see myself buying more from them i know she's coming out with a few different other puzzles this year and she has her new gradient puzzle line which i really want to get a couple of so i could see this puzzle brand being featured again on my channel and ones that I purchased myself, this one was, was gifted to me from her and I loved it and I loved doing it. And I, the, the only downfall I have is that it stained my fingers a little bit, but I washed it off and it was fine. So wanted to mention it, if you wanted to try her stuff, they do have other puzzles coming out that aren't so bright. I do want to ask if you've done others from her or if you did the gradient puzzles, does it have the same staining issues that this one does? Because those are a lot lighter in color. Um, so I'm thinking it might not be as bad as this very, very, very dark, bright blue. So that's the only downfall from them. Um, moving on to number five, I don't actually have with me and you haven't seen the video yet, but I did want to mention it and give you a heads up on the video. It's not necessarily a video about the puzzle, but it's about a subscription that I'm using. So I don't have the puzzle with me anymore, but it is from New York Puzzle Company and it's called Cactus Bloom. Now, earlier this year, I had tried New York Puzzle Company and had really horrible quality issues. And I really think it was just like a lemon, but they redeemed themselves late into the year. I had gotten one in the subscription and I loved this puzzle. The piece quality was lovely. And I love the different piece shapes and I liked how satisfying it was to put in. It also was tricky, but not too hard. I just did it in like a couple hours. It was very bright and colorful, which is how I remember the original puzzle that I had done from New York Puzzle Company being. So I really think that my Catch a Guinness puzzle, the one that I had issues with, just was like a dud, you know, sometimes that happens, but I remember, so I done this one very recently and I'll put a picture on the screen so you can see it but it was lovely. I love doing it. I love the image. It just reminded me of like my road trips that I've done recently. And it just gave me all the feels. You'll see it more in action when I post that video, which will probably be in a few weeks because it's, it's a, it's a whole thing. So puzzle number four has definitely opened my eyes to another brand, which is Ravensburger. I just want to clarify something. Um, because in the original video I had said, do you say Ravensburger or Ravensburger? And it was very mixed. Many Americans say it Ravensburger, but then someone in the comments said that it is a German brand, so they call it Ravensburger. Um, but it's either way, depending on where you live. So I say Ravensburger just because it is a German brand, so I'm going to pronounce it that way. But just want to let you know that's what I've discovered over the course of this year was how to pronounce it correctly, which is either way. So now we know. Um, anyways, so. We have the Ravensburger Prince John puzzle, which I really loved the image, but I also just loved the time when I was doing it. Dave helped me and it was 
a stressful yet fun time because <laughs> he was pretty, pretty much throw the puzzle pieces at me and I'd put them in place and we ended up doing it pretty quickly that way where he was pretty much just taking out a random piece and throwing at me and I would put it in its place. Um, but in general, the puzzle quality is absolutely amazing. It pretty much checked off every single box on what I like in a puzzle. So it had really great quality, loved the image, wasn't too shiny, um, had really great interlock. We were able to pick up the whole puzzle at one time. Don't know why anyone is doing that, but in case you're curious, you can. Um, but I just really loved the image. It was Disney. It was just so many things going for it. Also give me the warm fuzzies because I had this movie growing up. So I just really like this one. Um, and I could already have quite a few other Ravensburgers that I've picked up at thrift stores or I've also been swapping puzzles with some subscribers and I have a collection of them now and I'm so excited to just do them. Moving on to the top three. They all have beautiful images. It was really fun, really high quality. And so I really loved all of them. But in the third place, we do have Art and Fables Window Nook. I really enjoy this brand. I really like the texture of it. For me, it just has a lot of things going for it. It has a lot of extra things inside the box. It just is a great experience. I like how giant the box is. So if you want to work from it, you can. Um, in general, I like this puzzle for the image had a lot of different textures and it was very fun to do. I did it all in one sitting. I wanna say it took me around like seven hours. So not the sh shortest amount of time for a thousand pieces, but not incredibly difficult either. But I remember doing this one and just really loving the experience. And I will do more from them in the future. I have one here already. I also know they're like the main sponsor for the puzzle convention that I'm going to in July. But, so I could see myself doing more from them in the future, one of my favorite puzzle brands. And I love that they actually comment on my videos, which is crazy to think about. But anyways, wanted to mention them because they definitely deserve to be in the top three. I know f with the thousand pieces, I did have some issues with puzzle pieces going in the wrong place um, quite frequently. So that's like their only downfall, but I've only noticed it really on this one. I didn't notice it on the 500 pieces that I've done, but I think it's because this one's a larger puzzle and it also has larger sections of like a one pattern that can be confusing to know where the piece goes um, versus the other ones that I've done, it's very distinct of where pieces go. So I did want to mention that because that's something people have said to me, but I still love them and I still love the brand and I still love the quality. So needed to have them in my top three. Um, next we have in my second place is one that was just gifted to me from the brand and I 100% will be buying more from them because of the quality. But I also really just love this image. It was super quick and easy. It only took me about 90 minutes to do, but it is Cascade from Cloudberries. I really love the quality of this one. Checked every single box for my puzzle preferences. I really love that the puzzle that you get is the exact same colors as the box. It uh, comes with the poster, which I feel like wasn't necessary, but nice little feature. I like the simplistic box. It's just, just a really great puzzle. So I would do more from them in the future. Really like their quality. I did put it above Art and Fable just because this one I had no issues with putting pieces in the wrong place. Um, but in general, it just has a nice thick puzzle piece quality and I would recommend them 100%. And then my top spot was very easy for me to put here because ever since I did it, I wanted to do it again. And that is very rare for me to want to redo a puzzle and it needed to be in this place. I loved the quality of it. I just had so much fun doing it, so much fun filming it. Um, Dave helped me a little bit when I was doing it as well. So I needed to mention it in this video, which is Tim Burton from Haya. I loved this puzzle so much. I loved the piece quality. I loved the image a lot. It gave me all the warm and fuzzies. Again, Dave helped me. So it's pretty much like every single puzzle that's in this video had one of those features and this checked all of them. I did two others from this brand this year and I noticed with those two that they do have some interlocking issues, especially in like large sections of white or dark that it, the pieces kind of all fit together. I didn't notice it as much on this puzzle just because it's very distinct of where pieces go. So I didn't have that issue. So in general, the quality for this particular puzzle of theirs was lovely. Um, and I just, the image, it was the image that definitely got me. It was so much fun. It's a seek and find puzzle. It was just 
Ugh, I loved it so much. But that, so that is why it's in my top spot for the year. Um, but in general, I recommend all of these puzzles that are in this video for one reason or another. So those are my top puzzles of the year. I really enjoyed all of them. I think next year or for 2022, my goal is to do 100 puzzles, especially since I won't have school after April. So I will have more puzzling time. I'm not sure how many brands I'll do or how many pieces, but 100 puzzles, that's my goal. Thank you so much for being here and tuning into this video. I hope you all have a fantastic new year and I'll see you next time. Bye.